Hi, my name is Mark Thomas Schmidt. I work for GE Digital, and I want to talk a few minutes about uh, the platform for the industrial internet uh, of Predix that we're building um, at the GE Digital facility in San Ramon across the bay. Um, and what I want to start with is actually showing you a chart. Can I get the chart? Sorry about that. I'm going to start off by basically talking, talk, talking a little bit about um, how to position the platform that we're building. Um, I could tell you that Predict is an IoT platform, but that wouldn't tell you much because there's so many of them. Um, there is uh, variations on the theme of IoT platforms wherever you go. You see them often being created as <laughs> extensions to uh, existing uh, systems out there, for example, enterprise systems are often extended with, with IoT extensions. Uh, Salesforce.com has, has an IoT play out there. You also see a lot of IoT uh, platforms emerging in consumer space. The things that basically where the things that you want to, uh, want to integrate are in your house, the thermostats, the, the, the toothbrushes that you have. And again, those are often kind of uh, implemented ex extensions to existing systems of engagement. I think the, the really interesting action, I'm a little biased here, but the really interesting action in IoT space at the moment is at the industrial end of the spectrum, where the things that you're basically um, dealing with in that IO, uh, uh, IoT, they're industrial assets. They're relatively complex machines, <laughs> the kind of machines that GE actually builds, for example, wind turbines or gas turbines or locomotives or MRI machines that basically look inside a patient and give you a 3D uh, picture of, of what they have. And I think the reason why much of the really interesting advanced action happens in this space, the reason why you see the pure play IoT uh, applications, not extensions to existing systems, but systems that really focus on assets and nothing but assets, why they happen in that space is two reasons. Reason number one is there's things out there that you find in the industrial space they have been instrumented for a while. They're really well instrumented. They're well connected. They give you a ton of information even before IoT was a thing. So you have a spectrum of really interesting machines out there that you can tap into and, and, and extract information. And then the second thing is <laughs> the applications that you can build in this space uh, give you immediate value. If you can optimize the behavior of a, a wind farm or a fleet of wind farms out there, there's immediate business value. If you can optimize uh, the, uh, the, the rail system uh, in, 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 in the northwest of the, of the United States, there's, there's immediate business value. So when we set out to basically build uh, GE's platform for the industrial internet, one of the things that we made, uh, one of the decisions we made from, a, from an architectural perspective early on was we said, we want to build this entirely on open source. We do not want to re-implement a bunch of things that we find out there. So basically, uh, three, three quick things on, on this chart that basically gives you uh, the, the GE platform in a nutshell. Thing number one is we're standing on the shoulders of open source giants. Uh, we're using a lot of technology that was innovated in the context of systems of engagement when it comes to big data uh, analytics. We're using Kafka and, and Cassandra and the likes. But also, very importantly, we picked Cloud Foundry as our cloud platform. It's the environment that basically enables us to build and deploy at scale the kind of applications, the services, the microservices that make out the platform. But more importantly, it enables us to actually work with many, many partners that we have so that they can add services to our, our uh, ecosystem, the cloud services you see on top of, on, uh, on top of this chart. So where we innovate in the platform is basically building out those microservices on Cloud Foundry. And um, the, the last comment I want to make on this chart is an interesting challenge that we're facing that IoT platforms, especially the ones in the industrial internet, that they do not only live in the cloud. What I'm showing in this picture here is that basically we have a variation on the hybrid theme that, that Bill touched on. But in this case, hybrid is not kind of a private cloud in a data center on the enterprise connecting to a public cloud. The hybrid here is actually a presence of the platform close to the devices. We need basically push out applications beyond the boundaries of the cloud. We refer to this edge of the clouds. We push them basically out there into the environment. We have analytics that operate on those industrial machines close to those machines. We push them into the wind turbines. We push them out to the, the, the wind farms. We put them onto the locomotives. Uh, that drive around there. So, so one of the challenges that we're facing is how can we basically push the concept of cloud computing outside of the data centers into the real world and 
Uh, we have a few interesting applications that I'm just going to touch on here. We basically went live with this platform uh, a few months ago. Uh, here's, here's a few really interesting applications that we built on top of that. Uh, as part of the work that our team is doing, we're not only using Cloud Foundry, we're actually helping to extend it. There's a few things that we found um, that um, a cloud platform that was meant to, to basically cater to uh, transactional systems is, is lacking. So our teams have been working on adding IoT extensions to Cloud Foundry to enable more event-based communication. And then, as I said, <laughs> the big challenge that we're currently facing is how can we make use of the multi-cloud capabilities that Cloud Foundry has? We run our own data centers. Uh, we also deploy our platform into public clouds. But how can we take the next step? How can we basically make it so that the cloud platform in a native way can actually get into the edge of the cloud, into the gateways, into the controllers, closer to the sensors out there? gives us basically that environment in which we can then deploy end-to-end -end applications from the point where, where the wind turbine is out there in the field to the, the, the cloud backend that runs the analytics across it. That's a, in a nutshell. If you want to see a lot more about this, we have a booth uh, over there in the exhibition. So please go in and, and, and uh, take a look at Predix. Thank you.